What's up guys, I'm back here with a video, it's been a while, it's been actually years, um, this is going to be obviously about Mark Rick signing and uh, be Miami's next head coach, they're announcing at 10am tomorrow morning, um, pretty excited about it, everybody should be. A couple of things I want to say first before I get into the analysis and some questions I have about the hire. First of all, I think it's obvious he's a respected head coach, he's proved himself in the past, Average almost nine wins, at more than nine wins a game at Georgia, more than we almost have ever had here at Miami. The last 10 win season we had was back in 06, I believe. If not in 06, 03, I believe, is the other number I've heard, but I believe the correct numbers are six. Um, questions I have about the hiring. DC, number one. Number one question I have is defense coordinator. Obviously, Rick is an offensive mind. As already said, he wants to be more hands-on at the quarterback position, not to be unexpected. Brad Kaya should benefit extremely from this. Um, he has a proven track record at Georgia with the quarterbacks he helped earlier in his career, such as Matthew Stafford, DJ Shockley, Aaron Murray, um, even some of the newer quarterbacks that he's had, uh, like Aaron Murray. Um, but also great recruiter. First and foremost, you will already see his uh, recruiting benefits start to pay off if you haven't already, and we already have started to see it pay off. Um, one thing you guys might not have heard of if you don't follow things very closely is um, one of the recruits that Rick had uh, played a big part in having them been committed to Georgia for over a year, I believe. His name is Jacob Easton. He is unanimously ranked as a top, uh, as a five-star player. But once again, stars aren't everything. If you watch this guy's tape, you're seeing that at least he looks like the real deal. He has the mechanics to be a number one overall pick. Accurate um, footwork is good. From what I've seen, his footwork is really above par. The only thing I could see him having to work on is maybe a little bit quicker release. Um, obviously, he'll be a freshman. He'll need to work on the little things like sensing pressure in the pocket. There's not a lot of uh, a lot of that going on in high school uh, with the competition he's facing. He's from Washington, so I'm not saying they're chumps up there, but definitely not as good competition as you'll see in South Florida usually. Um, as a lot of you get Kane's plans already know, uh, we already have a quarterback committed for the this upcoming uh, recruiting cycle. He would be an early enrollee. Also, Easton would be too. Um, his name is Jack Allison. He's also a pro-style quarterback, just like Easton. Very accurate, very tall. Main difference you see from Allison to Easton is two things. One, Allison is very slender. He would almost certainly need a year to redshirt to bulk up before he could take the beating that a college quarterback needs to be able to take. Um, Eason looks more college ready. He would be able to be back up for Brad Kaya year one. Um, but I also think Eason would benefit from redshirting. But be aware, this kid could probably start at most other Power 5 conferences right away. Uh, but unfortunately for him, we've already got our franchise quarterback, Brad Kaya, um, which I'm really excited for him to start working with Mark Richt right now, especially since Rick said he wants to be more hands-on with the quarterback. That's the thing, but good news for Kaya. Um, besides that, like I said, great recruiter, but he also needs a great staff but beside him, both for recruiting and for developing and it looks like we're going to be giving him the money to do so. I've heard reports that we're actually going to be giving him more money than he had at Georgia to build a staff around him. So if that's true, that's only going to be great news for us because he's going to use that money wisely, in my opinion. He, he's, he's been in this j job, in this business for a while. He knows what he's doing. Um, he was a, a Bobby Bowden uh, pupil under him. He was his offense coordinator also, uh, and before he was promoted to offense coordinator, he was a positional coach, I think, for quarterbacks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and obviously, that's not to be uh, too surprising. He was our quarter, the backup quarterback to the great Jim Kelly back in the late 70s, early 80s. So he has Miami ties, check. He's proven, check. One in the greatest, well, not the greatest, but 
one of the most difficult conferences that nobody will say is not difficult to win in. So check. He's won two SEC championships since he's been there. Check. We haven't done that. He's won, um, never won a national championship there. Hopefully he could change that here. But once again, like I said, D.C., biggest thing I'm looking for. One name I've heard, um, well, his name is escaping me. Freddy Martinez, I believe, is his name. Um, I know he works for Tennessee. I think he's the DB coach there right now. Um, whoever it is, he used to, I believe that's his name, though, Freddy Martinez. But he used to be the co defense coordinator for Mark Rick before 2008 with somebody else. I don't remember the other guy's name. Um, I've also heard possibilities that Curtis Johnson could be a, a possible interest for wide receivers coach. Um, I would love for KB to stay coach of wide receivers. Um, Curtis Johnson is not someone to be taken lightly. Uh, he's, a, he's a head coach right now. He's doing a good job. I think he's over at Tulane. Um, but he's doing a good job as a head coach. So don't know why he would take a demotion, honestly, when he's still a young head coach. I think he's only in his 30s or 40s, possibly. Um, so I would like KB to stay. Love Larry Scott to stay. stay. He's only proven himself uh, as the interim head coach. Um, nothing but good things to say about Larry Scott. Honestly, I got nothing but good things to say about Al Golden as a person. As a football coach, that's a different thing. He, I honestly believe Golden could progress the players that he had. You could obviously see that in the talent that we had go to the NFL draft last year. We had uh, more draft picks than we had wins last year. Um, so it obviously means he could, if not see talent, develop talent. And I think his problem was coaching the actual game. He, uh, first of all, his play calling was always questionable at best. So he had his games where he might look good, um, but um, he never had the games where he went out and out coached. Uh, he, he never had the games where he out coached the superior coach on the other side of the line. So, I mean, in that regard, Mark Richt is a step up. I 100% would never say otherwise. Great coach, great offensive line. Even better with quarterbacks. Our quarterback uh, position is going to be set for a while, I believe. Um, like I said, only question is DC. Next video I'm going to be putting out after this is a recruiting update video. Where I'm going to try and do these as often as I can. I want to start doing this on a daily basis or a weekly basis, whatever you guys would like. Please leave your comments down below where they go in the comment section below. Rate love, like, hate, whatever you want to do this video, let me know, let me know if I can be doing something better, let me know if you love anything in particular that I'm doing, if you want me to set these up, these videos up in a specific way, uh, have certain segments that you want me to do, something you want me to talk about in particular, I take suggestions, I take requests, whatever you want to call them, leave your comments in the section below, uh, like I said, and Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy this. And you guys should be expecting more of these in the future. All I got left to say is, Cocaine's.